So we've got the, the big root up here now and you can see we've got Salmicia here. And if, can you see at the base there? Can I bring this in? You can see we've got these roots here are the Salmicia and then these very fat ones are the Dactylorhiza. So what we now have to do is clean it off and get them separated. I've also got that big fat root in here that I didn't want. See that going through there and pull that out. I reckon that's off of the birch tree here. But that's, a, that's a donor. Don't need that and neither does the tree really, it can survive. So I'm going to organise the tray. Let's just organise the tray now. Okay so I've moved the camera on the tray because the, the sun was hitting the lens of the camera and got the glare on so Shaking is the best. You can see how dry the ground is. Even up here, that area of ground is quite dry. So first thing I want to do is get the Salmicia here out. If I get it out, we can get these get immediately. I will just tidy it up, take all this old material off it here, I'm just pulling off all these old leaves. Care not to pull off the side shoot. So we can get these off, the worst of them, and then I'm going to. Okay, so immediately. Here I'm back with a going a nice bucket, get a of, bucket water. of water. I'll put that in some water. And we can get this. Salmisia. Well, I've just got it. You can see the, the roots on a Salmisia. They're quite thick and strap-like, which is a good indication that these plants can tolerate some degree of dryness. Also the kind of the leaf, of course, it's that hard, shiny leaves to prevent moisture loss. And when I was in New Zealand and saw where these plants grow, you can see how windy and dry the hillsides in the areas they grow on can become at times. So they're well adapted to this. But don't want to leave it out of the ground any too long, it's certainly not out of moisture, so give these roots a really good hydrate here. Swirl them round in a bucket, and that can just sit there in the shade for until I get a bit ready to do it. Back to the orchid. The shaking is the, the way there's a little fertile area bulb come out. I like to be all sorts in here. Just continually shaking gets the dry soil off and, oh yes we're coming out now and now, now we've got a clump out we can start to get them down to individuals this one has just got one young one on it's a uh, here you can see the if I bring it up and can hold it in front of the camera here for you to see there's the we have the old rhizome here that's attached to the to the stem and this is the new one with the shoot for next year all we need to do is take it and a twisting action there we go twist both ways round twist in both ways and the new one comes off Not easy doing this in front of the camera, so you can see it. I need a cameraman. So there we have the the old one, the new one. Now that can get planted right into the ground, and that will flower next year. This, the old one, is not done. Move back, it's easier. This one's not done because what I can do is plant this, and this bit with this green, there's enough green in there to keep this plant growing. I'll plant this in a box or a pot and this plant now, having lost its dominant growth, will decide, oh dear me, I need to make more and I'll get a number of new offsets on that. So, this bit into the bucket with water and the little one can go in this box here, which I'll move into the shade. And I'll just carry on now, working like this, shaking and splitting.
even tiny ones like this. You can do the same, but really we want to get them all singled out. There's another. Possibly because it's been such a congested clump. Most of these seem just to have made one offset. But generally I would expect in a, in a good going clump I would get more than one offset. bulb. So there's another and that will get replanted. Oh well, we've got um, some Codenopsis entangled up here. Hopefully that will still survive. It'll be in the ground somewhere. The bulb will be okay. Tangled onto these. So there's another and we keep working. And another. kind of roots are shrub roots. They're not the roots of anything that we're working on. The good thing about the dactyl rhizos is the roots are so fat we can easily see which ones they are. So this is a slightly tighter clump but shaking generally brings them apart. So again we can take off that really nice big fat one. See I've done very little damage to that one. Got its one, two, three, four, five. Dactyl Ariza. One, two, three, four, five. So thumb and four fingers. It's named because the rhizome looks like a hand. Your dact, dact, dactyl hand. So we'll just keep working away. There's another getting into some nice ones. The ones around the edge of the clump were the slightly more damaged ones. These have been in the middle and I've managed to get these up with minimal damage. But again, keeping these intact, that growth will grow on and I'll get new ones. I'll put these in a pot or one of my deep polished ivy boxes over the winter and in the spring I'll be able to lift them and show you all the new extra growths I'll have growing. So I'll just carry on with this just now. An interesting long one trying to get away from the competition maybe. Again any of this fibrous root here, fine fibrous root has come from the the impetrum that's growing nearby or or some of the other wee ericaceous, but really some really nice, good sized rhizomes there. Always twist off the new growth. There's less liable, less likelihood then for you to break the old rhizome off of the shoot. So take that, just, just a rotation or twist, you can feel it break as you do it. Oh, here's what, this is good. Now I've found one that shows you this too, look. Can we see that? Can I bring that up a bit closer? Get it in front of my legs. So we've got one little one. One big one. And the old one that will go on and produce more. So that's, that's been a good. The best I've had is I've had four tubers off of one big fat one previously. And so we just keep puddling away and we're almost through and this is only about a quarter of that clump. Of course the next thing is I'm going to have to get them replanted. But before I do that I'm going to get some along with the Salmisias of course over there but I'm going to go to the compost heap and enrich that soil. It's very dry and sandy now with very little organic substance and that's what I want to get back in so I'll go and do that. There's a tiny one that's dropped off. Even tiny ones, look, all replace them and I don't know if you, you can see but I'm smelling it because there's a, there's a fur. Can, I, can 
you see that? If I can bring that up, can you see the sort of fine hairs all along that route? I don't know if it's been picked up on the camera. And this smell of horse. And, and that, I think, is the evidence that the mycorrhiza there that's so valuable to the health of these orchids. I'm sure that's the presence of the mycorrhiza I'm, I'm seeing and smelling. So we'll just keep working away. That's that. So that's that clump. Nearly done. Again, shaking. Hold one and shake. Take no problem. Okay. And so after all that, I've got this little cut here. Wall. Or tubers. As I could say, the healthy ones, you'll feel a velvety touch to them, like they're covered in hair. The unhealthy ones, the ones that are going to get the black, they tend not to have that. And, and I'm quite convinced that what causes these infections is something attacks the mycorrhiza. The mycorrhiza disappears, leaving the plants vulnerable to those black deaths that either attack the foliage or the the, the, the tuber, the rhizome itself. In the foliage you may see some of these are a wee bit sticky and going yellow, but that's just age with these. You do get some that are badly virused, but the virus ones, you notice that from the start, early on the leaves are, are, have got this striped blotchy yellowish. But th this is just due to the, the season, late in the season, and also the very dryness in the ground. But here's a really, this is a really nice big one I've got here showing you beautifully. The rigid roots, that'll go off. You always get roots around the base there as well of the shoot and that's the shoot that will, that's a flowering sized for next year. So now I'm going to get the compost now and enrich the hole and I've, of course I've got the a wheelbarrow load of the rest of the dactylorhizas to sort and the silmicias to replant. There's one other, one other thing I didn't show you before I go away is um, because it's got to be a wee while before I can do these and it, it's a bit that I'll, I'll cover them with a an old towel that's soaked in water and that just helps preserve the humidity and the moisture around them so they don't get too dry and desiccated before I need to plant them. Although they're, they can stay out of the ground for some time and be dry. Rather they can be dry in the ground for some time. They're not really like being out of the ground and dry. There's a very big difference battery pack's needing change so I'm going to have to switch it off now, recharge your battery.